This episode of After Dark is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to support the Boss Rush Network and our family of podcasts, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash boss rush network. Thanks for your continued support. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative top podcast for the adults out there that listen to Boss Rush Network. Yeah, yeah, the adults. Yeah, we're all adults here, right? We're, we're adults, am I right? Guys, I, I hope no children please have this. Oh, good. <laughs> it's your boy, LeBron, back in the house. And, uh, yeah, after, after you know, some time away and stuff like that, I am ready to get back into the swing of things. But first, uh, if we're going to talk about swinging, we got to talk about... My friend Corey Derrick. What's that supposed to mean? Uh. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. You got you got anything you want to talk about? What, what Hi, Leron. So no, not not in that way. But I do have a story to tell. Okay, I, it's a very very funny story about how Lasby and I bonded over this trip to Pax. Okay. Okay. Well, well, hold that thought so I can go ahead and introduce the other co-hosts here. So, you know, you asked. It, it, it's, it's Boss Rush After Dark. It's not. It's not Corey Deering After Dark. It could be. Stay tuned. It could be. Yeah. Special Patreon be. tier, platinum tier. <laughs> <laughs> Private room. Nobody wants that. All right. One, one to never be forgotten. The one, the only Pat Klein. Uh, thank you, Leron. I forget about myself sometimes. You should never do that. You should never do that. We we love you, Pat. We love you. You are you are you are too lovable to be forgotten. <laughs> hey, Pat, uh, remember that time I called Roger Pat? <laughs> Pax. That is true. That was not funny, but kind of funny. Because we're both and also big and men. also back in the house of us. Uh, a, a lady that's too kitten shy of being the crazy, or crazy cat lady herself, uh, Stephanie Klimov. Ready to get back in that saddle. Mm. Well, welcome back to the show, y'all. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know how I survived about you guys like the last couple of weeks because uh, y'all y'all abandoned me. You know, mm. but, um, yep, sure, mm. that's what it was. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yep. Mm. Abandoned. All of us sure. abandoned you and went to the same location. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. y'all suck. I made new black friends, Leron. He did. <laughs> <laughs> for for those of you out there who are who are who do not watch the video version of the podcast, yes, I made like the strangest face ever. I did. Uh. So just 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 imagine just imagine it, you know, like you know, and it that's how strange it was. Wow. Like, I, I, don't, even know. I, I don't know where to come with that. Like, OK, first of all, am uh, I your only black friend? Because uh, no. why would you say you made other black friends? No. I mean, I'm publicly, gonna, I, uh, publicly, I have to say Ed's my friend. Uh... <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to racially shame you tonight. <laughs> that's OK. Um... On the next episode of After Dark. Just how uh, dark does Corey like it? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I can I can answer that question if you really want me to. <laughs> oh, you know what? You, you know what? Go for it. Mm, Tell no, us. Be, that seems that seems scary to answer from a white person's perspective. <laughs> I feel like I get in real big trouble for some of that, even if I wasn't intending it to be negative. <laughs> um, All right, but you're I but can... you're going to tell us about. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stephanie. No, go I was going to go say, ahead. man, that question could really be answered and in a very uncomfortable way if you're at a gentleman's club. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How dark. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I've, all I'm going to say is I've dated black girls before and I really like them. That was a long time ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you were getting ready. You're going to tell us about you and uh, Lasby's uh, love fest. So let's uh, let's let's get into it. <laughs> it wasn't a love fest. It was it was funny. Hey, 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 you sounded, hey, you sounded like you sounded like you just found like your 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 uh, your eleventh grade crush. So it's a good it. story, Leron. Look, when you know you you 
Lasby and I have very limited interaction, and sometimes, admittedly, it could come off adversarial, okay? Sometimes. It's not meant to be, but sometimes. We disagree on things, we make up, and it's fine, right? But I feel like we really bonded this trip, okay? And the, the moment I knew, okay, our friend, our friend, we, ha- we have, a, we have a, a trans friend out there who was at PAX, and uh, we were talking with her, and she asked us to pick out her thirst trap pictures for her Instagram. And we were like, okay, fine. I want to okay. go to her Instagram right now and look to see what you guys picked. I mean, it's, yeah, it's there. Uh, and the moment I knew Lasby and I were going to be great friends on this trip, not just <laughs> not just friendly, but great friends is the fact that she gave us like 15 to 20 options and we both picked the same two pictures. <laughs> and then and then we had a whole conversation on if 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 uh straight white dudes were just basic, all of us. All of us. And and she said sometimes. So, you know, that was the story. But uh no, I'm glad I'm glad Lasby and I bonded over something. So unexpected to be honest uh so yeah Yeah, i don't even think i've been pulled aside by a a straight like regular woman and just asked which of my thirst which pictures are thirsty Mm. i don't know i can send you some pictures if you want pat if you need to feel something okay (laughs) lauren and stephanie are just like "Mm, get us out of here (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, over overall, though, I just have a couple of questions to ask you real quickly, and these are uh, about packs, and these are just like really like concise answers. You don't have to like give give like you know like your life story, everything. Um, so uh, so what was the highlight of the entire trip? <laughs> the highlight went so the, high, the, reached the, to the stars, if you know what I mean. The the picture the picture y'all sent me was that the highlight. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, yeah. I mean it's just the way it happened. We're just about to. We could have gone to Dunkin' Donuts, and I said, you know what? I don't think we should wait in this line. Let's go to Starbucks. And we went to Starbucks, and right when we were almost done and about to leave, Pat was waiting for his order. A guy that was beautiful walked in. I made eye contact with him, and then we both did a double take. And I said, I think that's Ben Starr, but I'm not always right, and I tend to be wrong. Where's Pat? Where's Pat? Where's Pat? Where's Pat? So I start aggressively pointing, but like not letting Ben Starr see me pointing. Mm-hmm. Like, Pat, where's Patrick Ben Starr? And when I finally got confirmation it was Ben Starr, we all slowly and silently migrated toward where he was. I ran. What are you talking about? I'm, 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 I'm again, I was on the other side of the store. I'm you, I'm I'm sorry if I was there with y'all. Like like you would have been trying to figure out if that was Ben Starr, and I would have already been over there with him. Here, here, you. If you want to hear it from my perspective, I was on my phone, and I see like like a like a like a crazy person. Everybody that walks by, like me, no matter what, I have to just like, look at them. Like everybody that walks by, I just have to look at them. (laughs) And so I'm looking at my phone and I see this, I see this man walk in front of me and I just look up and I'm, I did like a double take. I'm like, that guy looks familiar. And I was like, kind of staring at him without like trying to be obvious. I think I'm like, Hmm, I think that's Ben Starr. I was like, Oh, okay. And then I like slowly turn and Stephanie and Pat are like freaking out. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, I think that's Ben Starr. That's Ben Starr. And they slowly like, like what, go up behind him because Creepily. he's talking to somebody else. And I'm like, Creepily. I'm like, you guys probably need a photographer. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we weren't. He, was, and he shook my hand and he cradled me underneath his arm. He was for the photo. He, he was a very nice, very sweet man. I will have to yes. say, he's very, very pleasant human being. Um, so, um, yeah, it was nice. He was nice. Yeah, we all touched him. We did, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he touched us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pat, you're the one that got to put your hand on the small of his back, right? Yep, because there's no other place to put my hand. <laughs> Couldn't have well, okay, they, they, I probably could have reached a little lower, but then we'd probably wouldn't be allowed to pack anymore. 
<laughs> you're trying to do less Ben Star. Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm right there with you. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, like, uh, like, like, I saved that picture y'all sent me to my camera roll. Like, that's 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 in that's in that's in my that's in my camera roll. It's in my Google Photos album. Like, yeah. So, I look at it at least twice a day. That, but also just the amount of bonding I did with all the boss rush folk. I mean, the games are great. There are a couple like there was like top tier games that I I took away from there that I will be keeping an eye on, uh, and playing. But it was the really awesome moments I had with the team, whether it's at the dinners or in the media room, that were pretty freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll remember it and cherish it forever. In fact, it was so great that I fell into a very spiraling depression when I got home. <laughs> I was yeah. crying. Remember, I was crying. I was freaking out. I yeah, do remember kidding. that. Then, uh, then Stefan, uh, then Mary Helen and I, basically crushed stuff in a sandwich form. Yeah. We sandwiched mm. stuff, Mary and I, mm. twice. Yeah, it was. Uh, I feel like. I mean, we we've all been friends for a long time, but I feel like being able to be there and just being with you guys really like solidified a a massive new level of friendship and like you know like like stephanie said these are this is a moment that you know i'm gonna cherish forever you know like because i mean you guys you guys have met each other before but like you know this was my first time meeting anybody except for ed but <laughs> ed's ed so uh but, you know, I mean, like, Pat, I mean, I feel like you and I got closer. I mean, we we met Major Nelson together. That was amazing. Yes, we did. And Pat encouraged me to go meet my childhood podcasting idols and mm -hmm. Giant Bomb guys. Like, and they met us. And he, he, Vinny emailed me back yesterday. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that was exciting. Um, And Iron Lords we met. And like, it was just, I don't know, but like Steph said, like I, I would, I would trade meeting everybody there just to be with you guys again, like in person for one more day. Like I really would. And like Steph said that I've been in like this really weird spiral of sadness the last two weeks. And uh, like I had this night circled for two weeks to just be with you guys again even in, even though you're in like this little tiny screen right like you guys are all my best friends and like it's just it was really nice to be together and like i was telling you guys like it was really i forgot what it was like to have like real friends who like let you be yourself and let you like mm -hmm. you know and like open up and 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 talk about things and like I like by the end of the trip, I like truly felt like myself and I, I, I hope the next time we are all together, like I can skip the n nervous, like how much of myself can I be? What do I let out? You know? And like the jump off point is like, I can just be myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So, cause yeah. it's, I it's mean, hard. You didn't seem nervous at all. You seem like you normally act. Be yeah, well, I mean, that. that's to, you know, we got to perform, Pat. We got to, you know, we can't have any performance issues here. Okay. True. I did bring my blue pills. They sure <laughs> as fuck helped. Let me tell you. Stop it. Little little blueies is what I call them. Stop uh, it. Not for sexual daddy. purposes, Ron. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, but seriously, like. Just like being able to hug everybody and like, I don't know, somebody not feel weird about it was nice. <laughs> um, so, or did you tell Laron about when I saw you for the first time and you, oh, and Pat came? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Talk about talk about making somebody feel unwanted. <laughs> Laron, listen, listen to listen to this. Pat, Pat and I took an Uber over together, right? And so uh -huh. I. I walk through the door first and S Stephanie says hi to me. And then she walks around me to go hug Pat, like <laughs> deliberately around me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, uh, 
it's like maybe Corey doesn't like hugs. <laughs> like maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't have spent all this money to get here. <laughs> uh, Uber, wait, take me back. Uh, no, it was that was uh, funny. It's funny. It's a funny story to tell. Yep, so awkward. awkward. Funny. It wouldn't be a Paxi's without some weird awkward hug moment from Steph. Exactly, yeah. whether it's a hug or a lack of a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Do I give uh, hugs? Do I not give hugs? I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I did my best to clearly wait till somebody initiated some sort of like greeting, whether it was like a fist bump or a handshake or a hug or something. Um, I met Kim Chica though. That was a that was a highlight too. Oh my gosh, yeah. she's a hugger. She's so nice. Yeah, she's yes. So nice. She ran went, into the media room and gave us hugs. It's yeah. like, what? I don't yeah. even know you, Kim. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was fun. Um, yeah. Seeing Kim Chica in person was also great. Yeah, see, it's all like the in-person thing. And um, I think this was definitely more of a me thing. But pe- speaking of making, meeting people, I, I got to meet and speak with Billy Basso, who is the solo developer of Animal Well. And I joke I have like a like a gaming crush on Billy Basso um, just because I've been following this game for a while and I'm just in complete awe of what he's able to accomplish. And mm-hmm. yeah, so that was cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll have him on here uh, when Animal Well comes out. I hope I so. Think, I think we will. Mm-hmm. I think we're cool enough. The, the weird thing too is like people recognizing us. I got mm-hmm. stopped too. Yeah, like people like really like recognizing us and not like like I got stopped by a like a somebody who listens to the show mm-hmm. and who was there. Is that the one who gave you a compliment on the way up the escalator? You should tell Leron that too. Oh yeah, Leron, I got a compliment. Okay. Yeah. Tell somebody, me. Somebody like somebody somebody said that the boss rush host shouldn't be so good looking. And I was by myself. So I was like, hmm. <laughs> I, I was like looking around. I was like, who's with All me? All right. Who's with me? All nobody? right. Oh, nobody made me feel good. Then I was like, oh, well, there's several other people on the podcast. Maybe they're talking about one of them. <laughs> they just recognize a logo. Uh, was... We all know Steph is really the, the best looking one of us. No, I was thinking more Leron, but. Oh, whatever. Nah. Oh, whatever. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, and I actually got stopped on the floor. Uh, the sh- the floor because I was interviewing uh, or talking to one of the game developers, and mm-hmm. uh, these guys are like, "I couldn't overhear. Are you f- are you from the Boss Rush?" I'm like, "Yep." And he's like, "Yo, oh, that's that's podcast. amazing. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. See, like what we're doing is actually is actually sticking. Yeah, it's it's cool too because like you know, Steph, you and I were talking earlier. Like, you never really know." who listens or if it really matters to anybody and like being there and meeting everybody and people recognizing the logos and our faces and like, you know, not just like the developers or, or other creators or whatever, like fans and friends, like it was just, Mm -hmm. it was a magical experience. Let me tell you. Definitely. Yeah. So anyways, enough about us. Let's talk about us. Mm-hmm. And by us, I mean let's answer these questions about us from these people. Well, hold on, hold on. We got we we got stuff to do first, right? <sighs> you know, because I mean, like if if the uh, if our audience would like to support Boss Rush After Dark and the Boss Rush Network, uh, please head over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network and get started. With uh, access, you get this show two weeks early and ad free. And some other perks like early access to other podcasts, voting rights, and more at the tier that's right for you. Again, that's patreon.com slash boss first network. If you can't contribute financially, it's no big deal. Uh, your viewership and listenership are enough for us. If you are watching the video, please subscribe to the channel and leave a thumbs up on this video and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when episodes go live, new episodes go live. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Leave our show a five-star rating and a nice review. It really helps with our visibility and discovery. Remember, you can always find new episodes, articles, reviews, and more over on our website, which is at bossrush.net. Now, Corey, we can get into mm-hmm. those topics. 
Yeah. Do oh, you want me to read them? Um, hold on. How many topics we got? No, we're reading them all. Topics. That's mm-hmm. guys. Question. This is a I mean, they're, they're, mailbag episode. What? Our first real mailbag episode. Leron, we're answering okay, them all. See. So sit One, tight. Two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven. There's seven of them. So 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 yeah. most of us get to get to get to do two. So I don't no, know. We're don't answering care. them all. No, no. I meant like I meant like we get to read the question. So oh. so uh, okay. I'll go first. Well, Fine. Hi, y'all. I have questions as I'm going through some strange times. Has a game or a piece of media ever gotten you through a bad time in your life? If so, how did it help you? How long did it take you to get over that t- that tough time? And that was from an email. We don't. We are we leaving it anonymous? Yeah. So okay. Some people requested an- anonymity, and some people just you know I just thought it would be safer unless somebody like. So when we do these mailbags now, like for after dark if you want if it's okay for you your name to be read please let us know i just you know some people are weird about their names being read on something especially like the topics that we talk about (laughs) so uh yep i just thought it would be better if we did that maybe maybe not maybe i'm just overthinking everything but fair enough um okay um actually since i read this question i'll i'll answer it first um a piece of media ever got me through a bad time in my life okay so my last uh not the relationship i'm in now like i'm still in that relationship and everything's going well uh but the relationship before that um i i got i got numbed and it was and it was after dating for almost three years and stuff like that so it kind of took me by surprise uh, and stuff like that and um and and I'm one of those people, like, I'm one of those people, well, number one, I learned that I do have a toxic trait, and that toxic trait is, like, I try to, like, to, like, push for closure. Um, you guys have heard me say over the course of 103 episodes sometimes that, I, that you know, like, like no one's, like, if you if you suffered a breakup, like, that other person does not owe you anything as far as closure is concerned. Like, you either have to figure it out on your own, or you just have to, like, move move past it and stuff like that. But, yeah, like, that was, some, that was something that, um, that you know, kind of haunted me because like at my age, like I was, I'm, I'm tired of being dumped, you know, I am, you know, mm-hmm. like I, every relationship I've had, you know, like the other person's walked away every relationship, you know, um, and stuff like that. So anyway, so, so yeah, so, um, I was like basically like just wallowing in it, you know, well, not wallowing in it, but you know, it's, yeah, wasn't really, wasn't really trying to date, but also wasn't really trying to like, what wasn't, what was more like trying to find out what was going on and stuff like that. And that was the year Star Trek had started coming back on on Paramount Plus, like new Star Trek. So Star Trek Discovery was in the middle of its first season. And um, it's episode, I think it's episode seven of the first season. Uh, the episodes, the episodes, uh, the episodes called Magic to Make the Sanest Person Go Mad. Um, I, I, and um, and basically it was an episode where like where like where like a couple of the main characters, you know, are finally coming to grips that they actually are, are like each other and attracting each other. Uh, but but one of them is just like like just trying to avoid it and stuff like that, and they get a pep talk, and and in that pep talk, um, these words these words were said, and and all of a sudden like, I I like I I felt it resonate with me, and I was actually able to like get out get into get into a headspace to getting of getting back into like the dating world and stuff like that. The line was, "Love is not logical." And in all seriousness, you know, like, like, I'm not sure what it was about those words. They, just, they, they, they just caught me. It's caught me at the right time. And, um, and, and I thought about it for a second. Continue watching the episode, of course. But as soon as the episode was over, I thought about it some more. And I was like, you know what? I think, I think, I think it's been long enough. Like, I need to like seriously try and like start dating again. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Star right. Trek saved my love life. Nice. Well, actually, Star Trek revitalized my love life. <laughs> Good quote, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I have love a, is not logical. A, I have a few examples. I'll just pull two, because um, they are pretty strong and random. But my the first weird, strange time was when I was pregnant, because I at the time was not thrilled by pregnancy. I was terrified out of my mind. Um, 
I really just was in a headspace from like, I don't want to have a kid. I don't want to be a parent. I'm having a panic attack, panic attack. And <laughs> shockingly, what got me through, especially at the very end of my pregnancy and the first few months, because I, I had some postpartum. That was a big part of it. Uh, was mm. rewatching the entire first series of the original Pokemon show <laughs> um, because it was part of my childhood. It's just that psychology thing. You you kind of not regress. It's not like I reg- personally regressed, but maybe mentally I wanted to regress into just the simplicity of being a kid and things are great and not stressful and you don't have a sack of flesh that you're now in charge of making sure it doesn't die. Um, I was terrified. I can't begin to tell you how terrified I was. I would just be in a fetal position watching that show like with tears in my eyes. I know it makes me sound like a terrible mom, but my son and I are like this now and I, I love him to death and I don't think I'd honestly still be alive if it weren't for him. But there was a that period of my life that I needed help getting through and apparently it was watching an old childhood show. And the second one was when COVID hit and we were sent home from the office and we were on lockdown and I'm like, F, I need something else to do. I've watched all my shows uh, or I didn't want to watch my shows. I wanted to be out in the yard doing something, but I need to keep my brain preoccupied. Goodness, what are these things called podcasts? I never listened to podcasts before. Okay, well, what kind of going. podcast do I want to listen to? Well, I don't like murder stuff. Uh, I don't like pop culture. Oh, I like Zelda. What happens if I type in Zelda? I don't think there'll be any Zelda stuff. And then I found another Zelda podcast and Nintendo Power Block. And you can all guess where that eventually ended up. Mm -hmm. Nintendo Power Block got me through the initial phases of lockdown. And I eventually became a writer and podcaster and so on and so forth. So She weaseled her way to the top, everybody. That's how that is. (laughs) So in that case, the podcast was a distraction from the what seemed like uh, almost like the end of the world almost at the time. Um, I I just needed a distraction. Sometimes like some some issues kind of need to be dealt with head on or at least when you're ready to deal with it head on. Other things, especially if you can't change them can be dealt by just being distracted from it until you're ready to mentally handle it and i think that's the latter for that <laughs> so well right. i guess i'll go next um <clears throat> so three separate events one game um so twilight princess is the game uh i know a lot of people make fun of me because twilight princess is my favorite zelda game but it means so much more to me than just it being a game right so Mm -hmm. uh the first time was when i moved home from columbus uh because i didn't want to play college football anymore and i was kind of lost and didn't know what to do with my life and um i decided to go to school locally um But like moving back in with your parents is always hard Um, and trying to figure out, you know, where you are in your life compared to other like your friends. Because like, I mean, I was 21 ish when I moved home, 20, 21. And like your friends are out, you know, junior, senior year of college and getting ready to look for jobs. And I I just had no idea what I wanted to do still. Right. Like I. And like I could hardly walk because football injuries and it was it was like this mess. So I ended up going to school for like uh, like business and and took some art classes and stuff. And um, but what really got me through that phase was uh, was Twilight Princess. And I played the GameCube version on the Wii uh, because I'm a loser Um, and uh yeah it just it helped me like really it helped take my mind off of like where i was in my life and like because i felt like all my friends were becoming successful and i was the loser stuck at home in mom's basement right that was the 
whole thing. And so uh, when I went back to school, I took a night class, uh, a night art class, which was really fun. And um, <laughs> I met this girl and I was like still kind of awkward, uh, you know, around new people and especially beautiful women are like, oh, my gosh, crazy. You're hot. I'm scared. Um, but <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I was wearing my Zelda T-shirt to this art class and like she looked at me and I looked at her and like we kind of like did that thing where like you keep looking at each other and like, you know, you notice me, but I'm going to pretend like I didn't notice you. And at one point she just walked over to me and said the Minna quote. Am I so beautiful that you have no words left? Oh, <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, I'm going to marry this woman. Uh, but then I was like, my I could feel my whole body turn red because like, you know, you I just was like, didn't know. I wasn't in the right mindset to like try to talk to this girl who was clearly very attractive. Um. <clears throat> And so long story short, <laughs> we actually ended up dating for like three years. And then, mm. and then, you know, it's the same girl that died in the car accident. Um, mm. But the first game I played after she died was Twilight Princess because we bonded over that game. And then the, the mirror scene at the end, you know, uh, when she says, you know, as long as the as long as the mirror is around, uh, we could meet again. But then, spoilers for Twilight Princess, I guess the mirror shatters, right? And then you kind of like that moment hits hard because, like, you know, you're never gonna see them again, truly. Uh, so those were two really major moments in my life that Twilight Princess really saved me. Um, and then. <clears throat> And then I got into some like really bad relationships and like the game, the game I played before I met my wife was Twilight Princess. I just, you know, I was so it was like Twilight 20. Princess is like your, your rabbit's foot. Yeah. Your relationship rabbit's foot. Yeah, it's uh, that game's been there for me for a, a lot and just reminds me of like. Friends and a life that I had and like how meaningful and how grateful I was to have that life right and like had all these great friends and it only takes one moment for that to go away you know and um you know I think that's why like coming home from PAX kind of hit me a little bit harder than maybe it should have or could have because you guys all reminded me what it was like to have that life even for a little bit you know and mm -hmm. uh you know, Twilight Princess really got me through some tough times. So I'll wrap it up there. But well, mine wasn't necessarily a video game. Um, mine actually was Family Guy. The TV show helped me through a lot of really hard times. Um, one of the hardest ones was when my uh, my dog, which meant a whole lot to me, passed away. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my I couldn't even go to the vet to put him to sleep. I was like already a mess. And so my mom dropped me off at my dad's house. And, uh, you know, I, I, I basically was watching Family Guy uh, on a DVD set that entire afternoon, just trying to. You know, just laugh and make me smile and just made me try to make me not think about the the fact that I lost my best friend um, during that time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that really helped uh, helped me get through uh, that moment. Um, also, for some reason, when uh, and th this is kind of on the opposite side of the scale, uh, <laughs> I've, there were plenty of times where back when I had a girlfriend, uh, we'd be watching Family Guy, and then all of a sudden we'd just start doing it. 
I don't know why. <laughs> All it, right, it, well, there you it, go. It, it, it's it's like, like, oh. indeed. <laughs> Yeah, it's like we put on Family Guy, and, uh, you know, within 15 minutes later, the clothes are off, so. Hey, it's the OG Netflix and chill. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, it was. Hey, man, whatever whatever gets you going, that's. Yeah. So it helped me both in my good times and in my bad times. Thank you, Seth McFarlane, for Family Guy. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> man. All right. All right. Lovely. All right, who's, Great who's, first who's question. Reading, who's reading the next question? I'll read it. Ideal honeymoon location. Hmm. Mm. We so are you, you with, read you read the question. You go first. I'm yeah. I'm getting there. I'm thinking. Uh <clears throat> well, we went to Carousel, which is like this Caribbean island just north of uh Venezuela, and it was really it was really nice and um very different um just obviously like culturally and just being there in this strange place that i never thought i would ever be was interesting and fascinating and stuff like that but um i think i don't know i th- i think you have to like in my opinion in my opinion as a man i guess you kind of yield to the partner to like kind of see where what interests them and like let's make that the best trip possible right like Mm -hmm. you know and i don't know i think that's kind of where i would be at but also like somewhere relaxing and just somewhere where you can enjoy yourselves without your problems kind of coming in and taking over or you know people badgering you about stuff right so that's for after the honeymoon and the rest of your life oh yeah (laughs) sorry yeah (laughs) of course that's coming from the divorced person to say that sorry i mean i said my relationship was gonna last five years so i i thought that was gonna be it past that We'll see how much longer. We'll see how long that runway is. <laughs> positive thinking, positive thoughts. Uh, yeah, I've never been to Curacao. I would like to go there. It's very fun. It was very, um, well, where we stayed, it was like all inclusive of like drinks mm-hmm. and food. So like we were, um, we had some drinks and we were very fat. Um, we'll say so. Nice. It's very exciting. Uh, well, also, they you have got, these... you. You got past the wedding ceremony, so that means you don't have to worry about fitting in the tux and dress anymore. Yeah, yeah. Fair. Uh, they had these things called croquettes too, which is like they're like these mm. breaded, like it's like a. I don't really know how to describe what's inside. It's like almost like mashed potatoes and sausage and cheese, mm. like inside yeah it's deep fried and you dip it in like this sauce that they give you it's very delicious i've been searching for them ever since we left there and i cannot find anything decent so that's my answer okay (laughs) i liked mine um i tend to go against when i say against the green just against kind of what people where people would commonly want to go i went to japan for my honeymoon and i still highly Mm. recommend it i went to tokyo and kyoto and they were the Mm. most amazing places i've ever been um if i were to ever go on another honeymoon in an alternate really reality i would love to go on a mediterranean cruise i just love seeing just cultures way different like i love eastern cultures in general i am biased um and I love trying those kinds of foods. And I feel like with the Mediterranean cruise, I can hit up like Istanbul and Greece and whatever. So those are mine. Uh, Steph, you nice. took mine. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, like, uh, talk about I, what, what makes it ideal for you. I want to go to Kyoto. I feel it would be a perfect honeymoon spot just because you got 
that old style Japanese flavor. Um, you got more of that peacefulness, the spas, the uh, just that old the Japanese gardens and the temples. I think that would be ideal to just spend some time with your partner, um, relaxing, but also getting that dose of culture that Japan was known for without also the high end bustling of, um, of the city life. Like Mm -hmm. that would be where I would want to go on my honeymoon. Great choice. Nice. Uh, I kind of want to. I kind of want to go back to a place that I've been quite a few times, and that's that's Puerto Rico. Um, mm-hmm. But I also feel like I also feel like me going to Puerto Rico on a honeymoon, I might get into a lot of trouble. So, <laughs> so, um, so saying that, you know, I'm going to be the cliche here and say I want I want to do the Hawaii thing. Hmm. I've never I've never been to Hawaii. It's one it's one of the um it's one of the it's one of the fifty states that I, that I that I want to get to, and uh. And yeah, like uh, the Navy never got me there. <laughs> oh, nice. Sorry, Leron. Mm-hmm. Someday. Is is. Yeah, someday. Someday. All right. Next question. Who's reading the next question? I guess that's uh, my turn this time. Do if it, Pat. you're all single again, or if you are still single, <laughs> I had to throw it in here because I'm the single one. Uh, what would you want in your next partner? Would you change your approach to find a new partner? Please let me remain anonymous. So I don't, okay, blah. We'll forget that part. So, yeah, if you were single again, what would you want in your next partner, and how would you change your approach? Hmm. Well, I'm still single, so I can't say I have a, a an approach that I can change because I don't even know what the approach would have been. Uh, but honestly, at this point, I want someone that's honest, that has like some of the same uh, interests as me. Like, I definitely want a gamer, like someone who enjoys games, will play games even if we're not playing the same game. But, you know, just kind of be in, like, the same room playing video games. Alone together. Um, Yeah, just, you know, spending time together, but not necessarily needing to be, like, forced with each other. You know what I mean? Um, Honesty is definitely a huge thing. I, like, that's always something I've held on the forefront. I don't like liars. I don't like lying. Lying hurts in more ways than one. Um, I also want someone who knows how to take care of themselves, though. Like, mm-hmm. in the sense of, I don't necessarily want to be the 100% breadwinner of the the house. Like, I want to know that if things did go south, or if, like, heaven forbid, I died... That she'd be able to take care of herself. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to have a, a good time and just not have to worry too much about that shit. Be supported, um, but also be able to be supportive. You know what mm. I mean? Like, yeah. I've always viewed that relationships are a two way or like, it takes two people to make the relationship work. And mm-hmm. I, 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 it's is been it, a while since I've been in a good, it's been yeah. a while since I've been in a good relationship. And to be perfectly honest, the, the last relationship I've been in was more very one sided uh, mm-hmm. when I look back at it. But, you know. Yeah. Chris Rock has this. So he, in one of his comedy specials, he says, um, Relationships are only hard if one person's working at it. Um, And, you know, I mean, I don't know if I agree 100% with that, but I do agree that, like, it is much easier when you guys are on the same page and are trying to work together, right? And so I understand what you mean, Pat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So that's the single guy. Let's hear about you guys with partners. What would happen if you needed to find another one? Hmm. Well, I'll, I uh, just because the answer came quick to my head, uh, two things come to mind. And I think, goodness, a lot has to do with probably both my age and just all the crap that I've been through. Number one, I is the process of finding a partner. I'm just going to stop fucking trying. Because I think that was my biggest problem my whole life is I was trying too hard. Trying, 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 needing to find a partner ASAP. I need to be with someone ASAP. I think that got me into a lot of relationships I didn't need to be in, to be quite honest with you. When that fucker wants to come around, then that fucker will come around. Not to say that I won't put any effort into it. Like, because we're in the day of technology, I'd probably eventually sign up for a dating app only to maybe cancel the subscription like three days later Mm (laughs) because online dating is a dumpster fire but my point is is i'm not going to be in a rush to try and find and locate my next partner um when that partner comes along that's great (laughs) i'll be right here um and the second is i want that partner to leave me the fuck alone sometimes this was definitely not what how i used to view relationships i would want to spend all my time with my partner i love spending time with my partner i'll be so upset when i don't spend time with my partner now i'm just like give me my fucking me time and then we'll regroup in a few hours or something so definitely different those two things are much different than the way I used to be. But if I were to start seeing all over and those are my two big, <laughs> big things. <laughs> so. Hmm. Well, because I'm, I'm kind of happy. I'm, I'm really happy in my relationship right now. I feel like that's I feel like not I'm the not- question. Ron. Yeah. I'm very happy in my relationship. I know, but I, uh, but I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to envision myself being single again. I don't. I don't know if any of us are, Lauren. Uh, what would you? What would I want in my next partner? Uh, that's a good question. Well, if you are, if if you want, you could just say the exact same thing as my current partner. If that's if you're struggling, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, for real, you know, um, I like, I like his, I like, I like his, I like his his independence that's not independent. If that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> when we first got when we first got together like uh like like uh, like i was i was told like uh like i was told he he appreciates this his alone time and then you know like fast forward to like fast forward to like the beginning of this year and uh and he's like and he's like we don't spend enough time together i feel like i'm lonely and i'm like really because i feel like we i, I thought we were spending a decent amount of time for, with each other for two people that you know were like you know like we need our space <laughs> um uh right now right now my boyfriend and i are doing the recon of our relationship and stuff like that and things are starting things are really starting to go to the next level like uh like like i explained to you guys uh before like we recorded the bossers podcast like you know like um like uh certain days are now set aside during the week uh because we're we're talking about apartments and we're talking about finding an apartment together and 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 starting to talk about like bringing bringing um our our finances and all that stuff together and all and all that stuff. So yeah, like uh like it's getting it's getting to, it's getting to the point where like where like a ring is getting put on it probably at some point as long as uh as long as nothing gets screwed up. Ooh. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. I would yeah I would definitely say like probably like the same qualities that that are in my partner right now we would be definitely what I would want to gravitate to. Um, also like if, uh, if this one doesn't work out, I might not, I, I might just, I might just stay single. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm getting old. I turned 49 this year. I'm, I'm getting old. Ah, uh, all right. Well, I guess it's my turn, huh? Um, let's see. So... If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S. Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilla, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtro. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network. very hypothetical everybody so 
cool your jets out there. Uh, <clears throat> so, I'm in my 30s, okay? God want... damn, you're old. I know. Sorry. Uh, what I want in my 30s is definitely much different than what I wanted in my 20s. Also, personally, I'm in a different space than I was, you know, even seven or eight years ago, right? So, um, I want, I mean, it was always about chasing the, the hot one and hopefully they have a great personality that goes with it, right? In my 20s, that was, that was the thing. Um, but I want someone who is, you know, who would be like caring and kind and understanding of things that, you know, I'm going through or whatever, but also like s stern with me and tell me to, you know, shut the fuck up and deal with it if I, if, it, if it's needed, right? Like, listen when it's needed. Tell me I'm being a, a bitch when I am being one, right? <laughs> like, I, mm -hmm. I need that. You know, and uh, so I would also need to look at someone and say, you know, I have kids. Maybe they have kids. We got to be good with kids. But also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would want to have any more kids. Right. I just that's a thing. You know, I, I, I have I love my kids. I don't need any more. I'm, I'm really you know, it's okay it would have to, to say that I don't want any more kids. I know it would have to be a very specific situation. And I don't know if that situation even exists. So, but they would have to be really good with my kids. Right. And, and that, that would be the most important thing. Um, also like I would want them to be into the same things that I'm in, which is like, you know, something that my current, relationship is like gaming for example my wife has no understanding of video games the five games she thinks of is mario call of duty fortnite minecraft and like you know mario kart or something tetris those are like that's what video games are to her there's no other video games she doesn't understand the appeal the stories the character kind of things you know my next relationship would have to like even if they're not a gamer at least have an, an understanding of that right like this is if i need my me time this is what i want to do with my me time right um i want somebody who wants to be with me but also understands that i need alone time um because that's just how i need to operate but like you know if i if we want to spend time together then we will spend time together but i will i need me time um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I want somebody who like, oh, let's, let's go out to dinner. Let's just, let's just go get some dinner. Like, let's just go out and hang out and have a good time. We'll be back in an hour and a half or so kids babysitting, whatever. Like, let's just go do something for us, you know? And, you know, that's something that we rarely do. Um, or if we're staying home, like, let's just sit together and watch something and be like together, you know, like one of my favorite things to do is like, it's going to sound stupid. One of my favorite things to do is if we're watching TV together is like snuggle up under a blanket and like get cozy and, you know, not even like, and be affectionate and not like, not in like, Oh, let's have sex 10 minutes after we're starting to snuggle here. But like, you know, just like if we're going to be together, let's, be together you know like let's oh, i don't know i can tell you family guy is really good for that mm. <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> uh, you know and and so like that would be something that is a big deal like i like hugging and cuddling and snuggling and like those are some of my favorite things to do but like you know when you have kids it's very hard to get that and so, like, it doesn't happen very often anymore. Um, but, I mean, that's just, like, a situational thing. It's not like a, oh, I hate you, whatever. Um, but also, like, someone who has just, like, a good heart and has good intentions, right? Like, that's 
needs to be something, you know, I mean, everybody here has said they've been in a bad relationship or two before. Right. So like, we all know what that looks like. And I am not, don't want to be in uh, one of those, you know, and like, also, like I said at the beginning, like in my 20s, I wanted somebody with looks who had a great person, who maybe a personality would come along later. Whereas now it's like, you know, I like obviously you want to be attracted to the person, but it's much more than that. You know, like mm-hmm. someone yeah. who can someone who can do both, you know, like, um, you know, whatever. So uh, also, I'm sitting here saying all these things and realize that my ass is completely broken and no. <laughs> <laughs> like one half is like everybody has baggage. Everybody has their shit that you're going to have to deal with when you're our age, right? Like everybody's gone through shit. Everybody has something that they're going to pull along. But then there's the other half of my brain that says, man, I'm so fucking broken. I'm just going to die alone in a dumpster somewhere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. but like, I would like somebody who would under like understand that about me is like, you know, going through shit still hurts in a lot of ways. And so someone who can understand that and, and guide that could guide me instead of like, you know, I don't want to say ignoring you, but like, you know, it, it, it's, I would need somebody not who brush would, it off. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. It's I'm, my eyes are tired. Um, and so, And, you know, obviously someone who just like feels like they care about you instead of just, you know, saying they care because like I kind of need that, too. I'm very needy for a broken person, if you haven't noticed. Uh, But, yeah, I don't know. Those are just kind of the things I would look at. And someone you could call like, (laughs) I don't know. I know people say, oh, I married my best friend. But like. That's that's a statement that you want to have, right? that you want to be true, you know? So anyways, uh, I hope That's nobody sweet. takes that on a negative, <laughs> negative stance on my current marriage. Cause I'm very happy. No. Um, but no, you know. no. I mean, part of the question that was at the end, it says hypothetically speaking, of course. Yeah, I know. But somebody, somebody might've missed that part. And so, you know, uh, <laughs> okay, I, I, I skipped it because not, not you. I'm to, saying I'm uh, saying somebody who's listening may have missed <laughs> that this was a hypothetical question. <laughs> OK, so. but yeah, it's true. I did miss that line because I thought the rest was just saying, please leave me anonymous. Yeah. Uh, sorry. That was... So uh, let, let's keep going. Yeah, we got uh, four what times. Yeah, what was your most embarrassing or awkward sexual or romantic encounter? Um, oh, gosh. I don't know. I don't think I had any awkward sexual encounter, which is not to say that I'm boasting or anything. I just feel like, if anything, the worst thing that were, was were to happen was it being dull. But so I guess romantic encounter, I, and I've told the story before, so I'm not going to repeat it at length. But I think the most awkward encounter was a date with this Irish kid in Boston who took me to an Irish bar, started a bar fight because one of his friends talked to me. And <laughs> after the bar fight, everyone became great friends. And on the way out, his 200 plus pound friend jumped on me and screamed that he was a crackhead. Uh, so that was at the, almost... at no, it's the... his friend. Oh, oh, oh the friend, fun. the friend called him, called himself a crackhead. Yeah. He jumped on me and went, Hey, Stephanie, I'm a crackhead. I'm like, okay, mm. I, I, I'd like to, and the date wants, still wanted to take me home and sleep with me. I'm like, I'm going to take a taxi. Cause this was pre Uber. Mm-hmm. That was awkward. Who else is awkward? Ooh, pick me. Okay, Corey, go. (laughs) Has anybody ever been thrown up on? No, but that does remind me of a time that I threw up on someone. Keep going. Oh, God. That wasn't your embarrassing moment? Man, I forgot about it. I I forgot about it. So come back to me at the end. Um, You were going for the gusto. So, yeah, I mean... I've been thrown up on, um, 
in different situations. Um, so some you alcohol was involved rough. sometimes, and some was not alcohol was not involved. So uh, <laughs> choking the chicken, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awkward. It was very. Um, yeah, that was very awkward. So, of course, it'd be very awkward. Yeah. Also, like college dorm room type stuff is just, man, it was awkward. It was pretty awkward. So, hmm. yeah, that would that's my most embarrassing. It's being thrown up on three separate times <laughs> by different people <laughs> during the act. Two of them, yes. Um, okay. One of them just. We were in the shower and she was very drunk and just threw up on me. So that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, no, I can't say I've ever been thrown up on, but I have had a drunk girl pee in my car. Mm. Ooh. Oh. And wow. then she passed out. Mm. I had a drunk girl pee on me in the shower once, Pat. Did you ask on purpose? Her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she like, thought it was oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> You, you wanted the golden shower experience? She thought it was funny. I was like, well, we're in the shower. I guess I could just soap it off. It's fine. Whatever. It's it's okay. Pee's clean. Mm. Yep. Oh. Throw up is not, though. Yeah. Mm. Also, yeah. the water was already warm, so it was like halfway over before I even noticed. So. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, 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 lo- I've lost condoms mid- mid-coitus. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, that's awkward. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that was another embarrassment. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like you're going, and then it's like, wait a second, this this feels different. <laughs> and someone had to go in and retrieve it. Yeah, yeah. Of, of, and of course, the only person going to retrieve it is the person that lost it. Mm. Yep. I mean, that, yes. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. This happens to me twice. Mm. Twice, the same partner. I. Oh, I not in the I, not in the same not in the same 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 scenario not in the same night though. Speaking of uh, losing condoms, have I ever got, told you guys the story about me figuring out I was allergic to latex? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Told- uh, Pat wasn't here uh, for that story. That was embarrassing. Uh, oh, I'd say probably I, my I, most. I, I, I bet every woman. I bet every woman you've been with is like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they want to try and then watch me itch for three days, like more power to you, I guess. Uh, also, lambskin smells real bad; it just makes you not oh, want to have sexy time. I like, honestly I, didn't. I honestly didn't realize they still made lambskin. I. Well, this was like 15 years ago, Laron. It wasn't like yesterday. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, like I mean, if you're using condoms now, like you know, considering that you've had that you have kids, like what's up? Um, no, no condoms. Pull out and pray. Sure. Or you're both just dead tired from watching two kids that it just doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Abstinence Fair. is the best way. I was, just, I was about to say, like IUDs, what, like what? Uh, that's a story for another day. Mm-hmm. Fair. All right. So my most embarrassing moment, uh, probably was um, doing doggy style. Um, my bed was kind of lower at the time, mm-hmm. and so I was trying to like position myself and i popped my knee Ooh! oh what what oh oh <laughs> i popped my like i i popped my knee and i just crumpled to the floor oh no like you mean like you mean like 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 how you how you pop your knuckles or did you actually hurt yourself um I have i have a weak knee that i dislocated once while ice skating and so oh, uh wow. I I put a little too much weight onto that and just it's like oh my, ah. oh my and God. I just oh like collapse in a heap. Okay, so I have a, I have a thing I have a thing about like I have a thing about like bones, joints, and and eyes. Like I get really squeamish when I hear when I hear stories about that stuff going awry. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Pat, you. I mean, she, she had a good laugh a bit, but. Uh, what? Well, yes, she did. Needless to say, it was missionary for the rest of the night. Hmm. Pat, you reminded, you reminded me of not an embarrassing story, but a funny story, actually. So in college, I had just kind of broken up with this girl, and <laughs> it's going to sound bad, but it's not. I promise. Maybe it is. I started fucking around with her friend. Um, um, her best friend, actually. Uh, and so she was in a dorm room by herself. So she had pus- pushed the two beds together as one bed. And so we were like, oh, this is great. We have more room to fuck around. And um, we fell through fucked the middle. Around, fucked around, went through the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. It was nice. funny. Nice. We laughed. Uh, um... Then you finished the deed. <laughs> Yeah, on the floor. Of course. <laughs> well, we weren't just going to get up and fix it. I mean, we were just going to keep going and just finish after, I guess. I don't like know. a true champ. Yeah. Well, it kind of made my uh, thing funny was she always called me an old man because we had a age difference of nine years between us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that just like emphasized. That's even funnier, yeah. An old man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, 12 year, there's a 12 year age gap between me and my boyfriend. Uh, I think I'm might have you beat Lamont. I think I'm we're I'm 15 year difference. Oh, oh man, uh, dating an old man. Oh man. Well, to wrap this up, thanks for jogging my memory about embarrassing mo- moment. It was my first boyfriend, and we went and <laughs> we went and got Chinese food, and I had spicy food, and oh, then no. when we went home. <laughs> I gave him a BJ and I puked on his dick. And the best part is that he said it first. Burn. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> nice. Oh. Okay, who's next? Oh. Next question. Is that why you broke up after? Uh, oh. Shockingly, we survived uh, probably like another year. Ooh, mm. He was a very understanding young man. Um, all right, what's the next question? Oh, I'll, I'll read it, uh, I guess. Uh not something I'm proud of, but here we go. What's the biggest lie you told in a relationship and gotten away with? Hmm. Well, this was in a time in between relationships where I was not wanting to be in a fully committed relationship. So I would go out with my friends and we would always give out fake names. And uh, I ended up, sort of dating this girl for like six months and she thought my name was Sean. <laughs> like six months ago. Hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. Well neat. Like did she um, think your name was Sean because you told her your name was yeah. Sean? Or did you just yes. like, or did or did oh oh okay. <laughs> okay, you're you're something special. All right. I know. Look, it was a it was a dark time. Okay. It was uh not a moment in time well, I'm proud of, but that's okay. Well, knowing, knowing what I know about uh, about your um, about your dating history, I, I get it. I understand. Yeah, I went through these. I went through these phases where, like, I would be in a relationship, and after it ended, I would be in like this really like I hate women. I'm gonna be an asshole, and like that's who I was for like six months, and then I was like, oh, I should probably not do that because that's a terrible thing to do to people. And then, you know, another relation, bad relationship would go by and go, fucking women. And then my dad comes out with the one liner that says, this is why men date men. Um, he told me that. <laughs> Zinger. It's like, Jesus. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's... I mean, no, I mean, no, honestly, like, 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 you know, dating a guy is like, is like having a roommate you can have sex with. Yeah. Fair. We live in the 21st century, century, Loran. Now you can have a woman roommate and still have sex with her. That's true. Or not That's have true. sex with her. Or not have sex with her. It goes both ways. 
Nah, but nah, but you know, like your fuck buddy is your best buddy. That's all I'm saying. Can't argue with that. Biggest lie I have ever told in a relationship and gotten away with. Um. Okay. So yeah, I am also I am I was also a scummy person in my young in my younger dating history because uh yeah I definitely cheated on a girlfriend and then um and then definitely like 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 told I don't even know what the lie was I told but I told one of the best lies ever and got out of it you know and was it was technically caught I mean it wasn't caught like I was in bed with the other person yeah you know, but I but I was but I was caught because like uh because like I was just too familiar with the other person I don't remember I don't remember how I lied my way out of that but um but yeah like uh I, I survived and but um but afterwards like you know like yeah like I I felt like I felt like shit you know um it it took it took a while it, and and uh, and honestly like the good news is like I like I was at such a young young age I was like in my early 20s I maybe like 20 22 23 you know when this happened and stuff like that so you know and um and I immediately made the 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 vow like to never to, to never do it again you know and I've pretty much stuck to my guns ever since, you know, as far as that goes. Um, I mean, there's some dubious stuff that's probably happened along the way, but you know, for the most part, like you know, like not just willfully going out there. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just go have sex with somebody that's not my partner. Mm-hmm. Nice. And now, and now we live in, and now we live in, in a day and age where we can talk about, you know, are we monogamous or do we want to have no open relationship? Yeah. Times change. Twenty twenty four, everybody. Who's next? Honestly, I I honestly can't think of ever lying to a partner and getting away with that. Um, no, I I would say probably the biggest lie in my in a relationship was me telling me that it was going to work. So I lied to myself. Mm. And uh, mm. yeah, clearly it didn't work, so I didn't get away with it. <laughs> mm. Well, you're you're an on, you're an honest honest dude. Hey, Paxel. Yeah, because I was gonna fall. I had to think real hard for anything. Because I'm not saying I never lie. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But uh, in a relationship, I can't think of anything that's significant that I have not been caught. Because I'm a bad liar. This is why I am not incentivized mm-hmm. to, to lie. Because I, I, it's usually pretty obvious when I lie. So the only time I really kind of thought of was um, in my marriage, past marriage. I, you know, the partner, he apparently, and this was what I found out later. He did not like the fact that I was bisexual. I had, had hidden that him hidden that from him for a while just because I was hiding, hiding that from everybody. Um, and he still has a very closeted mind, no pun intended, about LGBTQ. So one time we got into a big uh, fight and I just walked out. I almost kind of did the, the male thing where I just went to a strip club that night. Oh, I thought, you were about, out there. I, thought, I thought you were about to say you went for you went for uh, you went for a gallon of milk and a pack of cigarettes and just never could never came back. Oh no, but mm. no, I just went to a strip club and I just said I was out somewhere else. So, yeah. and you got away with that. Guess I did. Mm. Guess I did. Man, people people and their bisexual uh, their bisexual hangups is just weird, you know. I don't. I, I don't know. It's it's almost like it's almost like you want to ask the question and then like who hurt you? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it sure like to have that. Com- Would you like to have that conversation with your partner? Be like you're looking at a hot person. Like, hmm, that person's hot, and the other person would agree too. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like anyone. I feel like anyone that's secure enough in their sexuality, you know, can can acknowledge that you know someone of the same gender is is good looking or attractive, you know. I, I I I think so, you know, like Ben Starr. Yeah, very exactly. attractive. Man. I touched his shoulder. You just you just think he's attractive, mm-hmm. Corey? Like he's more than fucking attractive. Hey man, look. Oh, and by the way, and by the way, for anyone that's wondering, I did show I did show my boyfriend the picture of Ben Starr, and then I was like, and then I was like, you're lucky I did not go to go to PAX. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
He's a handsome man. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that's a pretty man. <laughs> oh, shit. What are you, what are you um, talking about? <laughs> and when he I've, opens his mouth, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think... Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's even yeah. better. I think um, one of the biggest lies we all tell each, tell each other or tell ourselves in relationships that we don't want to be in or whatever is that it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did that just recently, actually. So. All right. Let's do the next question. Cause I want to do the last one. Okay. Uh, Pat. Um, I think it's back to me, isn't it? I don't know. Who's it? Who, it's you, Laurent. Go. Okay. Oh. Have you ever made a playlist for sexual stuff? If oh so, what was on it? And was it successful? That was via Twitter. Oh, um, yeah. Let me tell I you. Haven't made it, I, haven't made it, I haven't made a sex playlist in forever. Like, uh, <laughs> that, was a, that was the thing to do. Like, that was the thing you, you, you do back when, you're, back when you're younger or back when you, when you think you still have something to prove and stuff like that. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot of... Uh, it was on a lot of the more romantic stuff or the, or the stuff that, you know, definitely like when you turn it on, like, like, you know, like your partner just knew, Oh, you, you're trying to get it on, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, you know, um, wasn't really nothing super, super raunchy or nothing like that. You know, like no, nothing that, you know, not that, you know, make, make church ladies, like, you know, like, like grab Bibles and start slapping you or something like that, you know? Um, yeah, but for the life of me, I can't remember some of the stuff that's cause I haven't done one of those playlists in forever. I, I'm always doing, I'm always just making random playlists just to keep my just keep my brain engaged. Like when I'm at work now, like I don't have time <laughs> I have time to make a make a sex playlist now. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, I used to make I used to make uh, like 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 sex playlists all the time and stuff like that. Even though, uh, well, I mean, actually, wait, I, I do know I do know at some point like uh, like like uh, everyone remembers uh, Closer by Nine Inch Nails. That did wind up on a playlist mm-hmm. because that. Because it, because like it's honestly it's honestly a very instructional song if you know what you're listening to. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Point. Yeah. Yeah. I've never made a playlist, but I should probably do that because when I attempt to put on music, I just put on like oh sexy music on Spotify, and then some like weird random one will come on in the middle, and then I'll start laughing and kills them, so. yeah yeah that's the other thing too like sometimes it pulls you out of the out of the moment yeah uh well i guess i'm the only one that says i did this all the time uh two songs that come to mind though t-pain's long lap dance song <laughs> is amazing is it called Long Lap Dance Song? Yeah, that's exactly what it's called. It's just called Long Lap Dance Song. That's awesome. Oh my god, dude, it's fucking phenomenal. I could have have so many babies out there running around. I have no idea. Um, uh, Spaceship Coop from Justin Timberlake, also a very man. It's it's it's, it's, it's weird that it's weird that Corey's throwing these these names of songs out here. And is this a guy that doesn't listen to like music? You know what, man? Yep. You do what you got to do, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you. I bet you did. Uh, Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles is also very, like, if you're not into like carving each other's back up with your fingernails, like that's a very nice, easy uh, uh, sexual song. You know what? I think it's a very romantic song. I don't know about like an yeah. actual like 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 sex sex song. Yeah. Um, I think of romantic sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, making beautiful. love as they say mm, the first uh version of uh beautiful mistakes by maroon five also a very sexy song maroon five music by the way is just very i don't know turns a lot of people on uh let's see uh unkiss me by maroon five is also another one it's very awesome uh Drown Together by Thriving Ivory and Janji is very good. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm looking at my playlist to see if there's anything that's worth talking about. Mm. Oh, he's got an actual playlist right now. I do. I do. It's on YouTube Music. Um, nice. Obviously, we've talked about um, the, the Hills from the weekend. 
most specifically yeah. for that uh <laughs> the one commercial that was like jesus christ what is going on <laughs> um earned it by the weekend is also very good dress on by justin timberlake is also very good until the end of time by justin timberlake is also very good um I mean, I mean, Corey, I can give you a song you can add. You can add to that playlist. N- nothing uh, holding back you... by Shawn Mendes, also a very good song. Oh, I am not. I am not a fan of Shawn Mendes, not at all. That's, you don't have that, to he, be. That's a that's a boner killer for me. That's fine. Um, I got a song that worked perfectly for me. What is it? It seems today. That all you see oh is violence, and movies, and sex on oh, I TV. Bet. I bet. <laughs> but oh, where are those good old-fashioned values on which we used to rely? Mm-hmm. Luckily, it's a family it's guy. A family guy. <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, uh, Andy Grammer on that list, too. Mm-hmm. So. I'll stop there. Yes. Anyways, that 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 was the only one that ever worked for me. So, I don't have a playlist, just a play TV <laughs> show. <laughs> you know what? As long as it works, that's all that matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, I don't know about you guys, but let's wrap it up with our last question. Um, and I believe the name is in there, so I think we can say it, right, Corey? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, Hi, if they all. put their name in, I would assume. Yeah, so this, this came in an email. Hi, all. I don't know if you all give advice here, but I'm asking for it. My name is Amanda, and I'm 48 years old. I found your podcast about five months ago or so ago, and it really has helped me through a rough patch and added a spark of youthfulness to my life. I'm recently divorced, and I've been looking to get back out there. Any advice for getting back out there as an older person? I know you're all much younger than I am, but any advice is good advice. Thank you. The reason why I wanted to read that question, because first of all, thank you so much for listening to us. This Mm -hmm. makes me so happy that you actually wanted to reach out. Uh, And number two, just because as a divorced person, I can relate. Um, So seriously, thank you. I hope you do reach out to us for like, any other thing thank you for listening to us i hope you continue to listen to us um while you know we might not be of necessarily the same age but i am divorced uh and once you hit a certain you know when you're in your 30 like mid 30s uh or 40s like you said it it's it, it your wants and your needs are different and also the society we live in uh, it is very difficult to meet people in real life. Um, the majority mm-hmm. of dating is online dating. And I will tell you, online dating is a dumpster fire. It is horrible. It is terrible. Um, and I realize I probably shouldn't say that and scare you off, um, my dear <laughs> Amanda. But um, It's great if you're attractive, but... <laughs> No, because you you get lots of weirdos. You get people that I don't like. I've got someone who's didn't want to date me because I was an only child. Like Mm. it's just like really weird. weird. It's weird. So I know that sounds like a lot of negativity coming out of my mouth, but it's more like, you know what? One one step at a time, one day at a time. Um, You might as well get on online dating as a start, even if you're kind of gun shy about actually taking online dating seriously start off just to kind of get a feel it's out there it it i'll admit when i first was in the process of getting divorced i was too scared and didn't even know what to do but i still went on okay cupid just to kind of boost my ego and boost my self-confidence which might sound mean for maybe other people that are looking to date but it helped me it actually helped me get through divorce is just to be on an online dating site not even actually starting to take dating seriously because it also kept my educated me about what's the current dating scene what to look look out for in a bad way and in a good way and i in a just ended up meeting my current partner when I wasn't even trying to look. So I don't want to keep rambling on because there's so many kind of bits of advice I'm sure everyone could give. But I think one day at a time, 
even if dating is is daunting, whether it's because you're worried about your age or or not or a different factor, just start somewhere and try not to take it too seriously and get acclimated. <laughs> get acclimated first. Hmm. Good advice. What would you guys, yeah. would you guys like to add? Be yourself. Honestly, don't try to be someone that you're not uh, because you're just not going to be happy. Uh Yeah. I would say as someone who was very, um, and I'm not saying this is Amanda's situation here, right? But I'm as someone who after a relationship had like went through a a phase where I was trying to reinvent myself as like something different because I didn't like who I was and it ended up backfiring. Don't do that. Like Pat said, Mm -hmm. like just be Mm -hmm. yourself, find aspects that you really love about yourself and make those prominent. Right. But like, don't change who you are just because if you feel lonely or you just want to find somebody it's it will happen you know even if it feels like it's not going to happen or you feel like you know the last person you were with was the last person you're ever going to be with and you're just devastated right like it will happen right and so um yeah i just be yourself and get get back out there <laughs> yeah be yourself, be kind to yourself. Yes. And, you know, there, there's, there's a really wide dating pool out there. There, there really is someone for everyone. Mm-hmm. There yeah. There really is. Yeah. I'm a believer of there's more than one person for everyone. Mm. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but. And <laughs> we, and we, re- we revolve back to Corey's a swinger. Ah. Just had to go there, didn't you? Swing into the left, swing into the mm-hmm. left. Swing. Oh my. How about you, Leron? Any bits of advice? Um, yeah. One of the one of the big things I would say for for getting back out there is um is kind of kind of just know yourself like because that's really what did it for me like when when i I, if you were listening earlier and i said like the whole the whole revelation behind like the love is the love is not logical thing from star trek and stuff like that uh it it really helped me like 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 put uh put more of a focus on myself and stuff like that yeah of course like you know like um at that point like you know like uh i did have some stumbles out the gate you know and stuff like that but you know like um i found a wonderful person that i've been with for three years now and like i mentioned earlier it looks like it's going it's going to go all the way um but, but yeah i think i think honestly that probably would not have happened you know if it just if i just hadn't like you know just like known myself more and yeah i mean you know i still have i still have i still have the thoughts and the doubts sometimes you know based on like my history of always being the person that's been dumped and stuff like that but you know honestly like just being yourself knowing yourself and knowing what knowing what you're worth and capable of will take you a long way and and trust me like uh you might wind up being the person that prospective dates are intimidated about because like they'll, they'll see that shine that you have and, and they'll either, they'll either want to run to it or they'll want to run away from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good point. Yep. And I'm going to add one last thing about online dating and I don't know what, what area you're from, Amanda. I don't know if you're across the pond or wherever. Um, don't get discouraged if one dating app, if that's the path you choose, of course, um, there's definitely more than one. Don't get discouraged if one doesn't work. Like Bumble was a, was a disaster for me, but I didn't got nothing from Bumble. Uh, but Hinge was great. Isn't, it, isn't Bumble huh? isn't Bumble the one that's designed for women to make them hurt the first move? Yeah, and that did absolutely shit for me. <laughs> okay, did nothing. Um, Hinge is great. I found a great quality of partner, uh, prospective partners on Hinge. Coffee meets bagels, good for your professionals, but it's, I feel like that's more, more people in city locations. 
um, okay, Cupid is okay, cast a wider net kind of type thing. Um, those are just a couple examples of some of the apps. Um, just, you know, don't beat yourself up if you're not hitting a lot of home runs on one. Yeah. Don't rush. There's no reason. Go treat yourself. Make make yourself feel desirable. Put yourself in that mood. And when you're in that mood, the hose will come flocking. <laughs> Just kidding. We wish you luck. Please keep us posted. We love you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. And thank you to everyone that actually submitted questions to us on um, any of the, uh, the various uh, uh, forums and mediums. Mediums. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, like if you want your, if you, if you have a question for us, like always we're, we are, we are open. We are inviting. You can email us. You can hit us up on discord. You can, you can, you can add us. Uh, you can ask the Twitter. Hell, if you, hell, if you follow us on, on Instagram, like, like drop, drop a line or slide into our DMS there and stuff like that. Like we will definitely entertain you all. <laughs> Speaking of entertaining, that's a wrap for tonight's show, episode. <laughs> I want to thank everybody out there who's been watching or listening to Boss Rush After Dark. Uh, as you know, this is the alternative podcast, uh, topical podcast for adults on the Boss Rush Network. If you enjoyed the show, leave us a five-star rating and a nice review on the, on the podcast services or subscribe to their YouTube channel and like this video. Uh, it helps out, once again, with big time, helps us out with uh, discoverability and visibility. Well, Stephanie, Pat, Corey, we did it. We did. We did do it. Episode one, episode one hundred and three of Boss Rush After Dark. Wow, like, wow. I don't know. Like, uh, like, I feel, I feel good. Like now, saying a hundred and something in the episodes now. Like it, it's, it, it's, it's amazing because, uh, because, yeah. because, because, like, well, a lot of people don't know. Like, this was a big experiment when, when we got it up off the ground. This is a big experiment. So yeah. So yeah, definitely come back, uh, hang out with us again for the next all new episode of Boss Rush After Dark, uh, where we talk about more than just the stuff that's content and printing for the rest of the network. I'm sorry, I'm starting to slur my words because I'm getting tired. Like, I'm, <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> but yeah, send us more questions. Yes, more yes, questions. definitely. Every week, everybody, yes. every week, more questions. Thanks. We want your questions. All right, everyone. Y'all be safe out there. Have a, have a good night. And remember, and remember, if you can't love the one you with, wait, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one that you with. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network.